After playing Rise of Kingdoms for nine months, Chiskool Gaming and I are here with 10 tips for new players. What is up my friends? My name is Echo and above you can see the man behind Rise of Kingdoms. It's Chiskool Gaming and he and I are going to be breaking down 10 tips for new players in today's video. Things that you want to make sure that you do properly so you can get the best, most fresh start when you start out the game. Chiskool, what's up my man? Hey Echo, thanks for having me on the channel. A pleasure to be here and let's break it down for the beginning players because this is some important stuff. This is important stuff and I know myself personally, I made mistakes and a ton of mistakes when I started the game. Luckily, I was able to recover from those mistakes. But, you know, why do you have to make them when you can watch an amazing video like this one and avoid them all together? We have actually 11 tips for you today. So we said 10, but there's a bonus one as well. But make sure, guys... After you watch this video and fall in love with Chiskool, that you go to the link in the description of this video, check out the video that I link of his, and if you enjoy his content, make sure you subscribe to his channel as well. And remember, you know, don't forget to subscribe to my channel also, guys. Also, please hit that bell. But let's start out Chiskool with the number one tip. The one thing that we put at number one, which is choosing an alliance. Like when you get into this game, it's really important that you get an alliance that can help protect you so you don't get slapped around the map. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so you know, the alliance you choose really sets your trajectory. When I started in Kingdom 51, uh, I was in an alliance that seemed fine. It was a zillion times better than like the very first one I applied to before I knew what I was doing at all. Uh, but very quickly, I found that I had some really different mindsets from the way the alliance was run. And I jumped to the second most powerful alliance in the kingdom. Uh, this turned out to be a really great choice because the alliance I left was completely obliterated <laughs> in part due to the cockiness of the leader of that alliance. Okay. So um, I was really happy with the place that I went to and it set me on a really good trajectory. More than once I have changed alliances and right now, very recently, I actually switched kingdoms, which is a separate idea entirely. But you really do need to join a place that makes sense for you and it's easy to get super, super attached mm -hmm. um, when, you know, you got to find the right experience for yourself. This most recent change that I made for myself, I mean, I've spent like more than $10,000 in Rise of Kingdoms, which is kind of crazy to say out loud. Um, but I went to like one of the very highest tier kingdoms and alliances in the game mm -hmm. uh, because at the spend level that I've committed at, that's really a big part of what I'm looking for. And I was not able to create that for myself in Kingdom 51. And that's a complicated story. But that's a whole nother video right there. But I'll tell you what, guys, if you can't be protected, you're going to find your city on fire more than once, especially because you're such low power. You're just starting out the game. So you need to find a bunch of people that can actually protect you and probably not try to be in the center of the map in those really, you know, desirable places. Maybe hang out on the outside a little bit for a while so you can build yourself up. But that's tip number one. We're getting into tip number two, which is going to be don't hold off on leveling up your city hall. Your city, I mean, coming from Clash of Clans, what we try and do is completely max out your town hall level and then move on to the next town hall level. But Chisco, can you talk a little bit about how it works here in Rise of Kingdoms? Yeah, you know what's really interesting is that in Rise of Kingdoms, you don't need to level up every building before you can take your city hall to the next level. In fact, it's really good that you don't do that. You want to do the bare minimum required to keep that city hall cranking, 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 mm -hmm. with the exception maybe of your academy, which is where you do your research, which is right. very important. Uh, keep that going too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll unlock new things to research every time you level that up, almost every time anyways. So mm -hmm. um, with the exception of the academy, you really want to optimize for getting that city hall going, especially because it is a building that if I remember correctly, it takes a lot longer than some of the other buildings. I believe so. It's been a while, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been a while. But yeah. what you want to do is get the city hall going to the next level and then double back and use that time while your city hall is upgrading to take care of some of the other buildings that you feel are important. Okay, that's a great tip. And it's one that was hard for me to break from the mold. Being an original Clash of Clans player, I really wanted to max out each city hall level. But I quickly realized that that was not the way to go. I didn't have to do that. And I was actually better off if I didn't do that. So guys, get there as quickly as you can. Upgrade your city hall because you're going to get more rewards, benefits, and perks 
as you do that. But moving on to number three, build every day for daily quests. And this is something that I focus on every day. I want to get that golden key. What do you got to say? So um, something I realized as I was powering up is that my buildings were taking longer and longer to cre you know, upgrade. Yeah. And one of the major quests that you can do every day involves building at least one thing every single day. Uh, but I couldn't do that with certain buildings that I was making. But someone pointed out to me, uh, it was my friend Talerian, that mm -hmm. you could build a decorative palm tree for 1,000 uh, wood. Wood, yeah. <laughs> Not even gold. Not even gold. And, you know, hmm. boom, you get credit for the building quest. So I've been building palm trees every day for the last seven months or so yeah, you need it. <laughs> when I learned that technique. It's a pretty sweet technique. Chisco, let me tell you something funny. I just realized that maybe three or four days ago, <laughs> which is crazy. You could have given me this tip seven months ago, but no, I just figured it out because I'm completely max level. There's nothing for me to do, but you could still get it by building trees. And when you run out of room, get rid of those trees and build new ones. It's definitely worth it. You want those golden keys every single day as well as the other rewards that you can get. But moving on to number four, speed up during events. Don't hoard though. Yeah, so you want to save up your speed ups, and, and this depends a little bit on your spend style. But for most people that are in the free to play or nearly free to play realm, you want to save those speed ups for an event that's going to reward you for spending them. And those will come at least, you know, once a week. Um, and you got to pick and choose your battles there. Some events are going to be really unwinnable for you, like. You know, the Mighty Governor is not an event that you're going to win out the gates right. uh, unless you're spending huge amounts of money. So save your speed ups for events, but but don't hoard them for too long. Uh, I found myself in a situation where I had thousands and thousands of hours of speed ups when that power would have actually been really helpful to have, uh, you know, converted from speed ups to troops Rewards. and research and buildings. Right. Yeah. So that when we were at war, I had all that stuff available. Speed ups are worthless to you for the most part, during a war, um, but you want to not spend them when there's no extra reward or goodies for having spent them. Yeah, and again, that's another mistake that I made in the beginning. I was, I mean, I, I hoard stuff, man. In games, I just like to keep them. I just like to have the gems. I don't like to spend, but I quickly, again, found out that I need to start speeding up, taking advantage of those events. Great tip there for some new players. I know there's a lot of people that are in those shoes. But we're going to talk right now about a little bit more speed ups. We're talking about our tip number five, always speed up your research buildings. Yes, your research and troop training buildings are really crucial. Let me present this idea, okay? When you're upgrading your academy or any of your troop training buildings, you can't build troops. You can't do research. Right. So for every hour of speed up that you put into making that building get done faster, you're an hour faster to building more troops. Your speed ups do double duty. It's like a two for one speed up. When You're you double speed dipping, up, man. You're double buildings. dipping. Oh, yeah. And, you know, wait until you get helped the max number of times, right? Like grab a rune from the map so mm -hmm. that it reduces the time to do that building. But as soon as you've been helped that max number of times, boom, you power through those uh, speed ups and then start doing research again. Start training more troops. That is really, really crucial. I love it, but you know what? You just mentioned runes. We're not even talking about runes today. Looks like there's gonna have to be a part two to this video, Chiskul, because I'm thinking of more tips as we're going on. But that's a great one right there. I love the double dipping. Get that value where you can get it. But reaching building buffs, that's our number six tip for today. Talk about that one. Yes, so um, as buildings level up, you get certain bonuses. And you may not have noticed, unless you've actually gone into the information for each of those buildings, that certain buildings give some really sweet buffs. For instance, the academy improves your research speed. Super mm -hmm. crucial. The military buildings are going to uh, give you some stats, uh, which is really, really good for combat. So it's important to know kind of what those thresholds are so that if you're like just one level away from getting a bonus, you should just power that building out, level it up and enjoy the be uh, the benefit. Yeah, get those bonuses. That's a great point as well. It's not for every single building, but those are things that you can kind of explore as you learn the game, correct? Correct. Gathering though, Chiskul, this is an important one. Number seven, more mistakes that I've made in the game gonna be mentioned right here. Gather on your own homeland, in your own territory. Why? You get a 25% gathering speed boost when you're gathering in your own territory. Huge. It is huge. 
Um, for a time, we were the number one gatherer in Kingdom 51. Uh, we mm -hmm. held that title for many months on end. So we're pretty well versed in gathering and gathering commanders and builds. And you've got some videos on that. In fact, I think we collabed on some of those videos. I think way you back helped me with many of those videos, man. <laughs> yeah. you, were, you, you made me the gatherer that I am today. And I'm still, I still can't fill your shoes, but I nice. learned a lot from you for sure. Nice. Yes, gather on Alliance territory, even if you don't have the right build, even if you don't have the right commanders, at least gather on your own territory. Now, what about our number eight tip? Gathering during the Mightiest Governor event when, you know, it's, it's just not safe. Tell me about that. Okay, so the Mighty Governor event has several parts. The last part, which is the most important part, this is where people score the most points, is in what's called the kill event. It's a two day long event uh, where people get a lot of points for severely injuring or killing troops. Now, if you send your troops out to gather, depending on the rules that your kingdom has set in place, there's a very, very good chance they're all just going to get sent to the hospital and you're going to end up with a hospital bill way higher than yeah. whatever amount of resources you would have gathered during that kill event. Yeah, I've again come victim to that. You know, Especially if you don't pay attention to the events. If you're a new player, you don't know about these events. You don't understand them. You don't know what the Mightiest Governor is. So you're going to be out there one day sending out all your troops and you're going to realize, well, whoops, my hospital's full. I lost power for my troops dying because I went gathering during this event. Now, something else is just cool to add on to that. When I first started playing the game, I wouldn't just bring the minimum troops needed to gather that resource position. I would do max. I would max the whole thing out because I just thought it was... I didn't know that I shouldn't do that. So I was sending out a ton of unnecessary troops. It wasn't making it any faster. And then those troops were dying during the Mightiest Governor event as well. So really a little side tip is just bring the number of troops that are recommended because that's the ones that you need to grab all the resources from that spot. That's a, that's like another side tip from me yeah, actually. Yeah, well, especially during Mighty Governor because yeah. look, like I I have one Mighty Governor. I did that recently. I got a number one placement. And when I did that, if I saw a full army gathering, that was like licking my lips, ready to kill, baby. Because that is that is even more free kills that you've given me. So um, big player is going to be hunting for you. You, you. you probably want to like... I mean, gosh, now we're talking about the kill event. Spend down all your resources below your storehouse limit. Pop a peace shield. Like, people are going to be out for blood. Yeah. And do not want to wake up to your city wall burning. No. Actually, a popular video that I've done in the past is how to put out the fire. Something so simple. But it was popular because new players run into this every day. Like, they get on the game like, what the heck? This game is killing me. Everything that I've worked for is burning. And it's so frustrating. It hasn't been that long ago since I've dealt with that. I remember it very clearly, you know, the, the frustration that the game will make you feel when you wake up to that. So, uh, yeah, a peace shield, probably the best idea for a new player that's really vulnerable to someone like you coming through just trying to bully people around. Hey, hey, now, I don't bully. I don't bully. I follow the kill that rules. But, but you, most kingdoms, though, at this stage of the game, know to set rules where it's like don't hit cities but do, you know, do open field combat. I don't know. At this very start of the game, though, like, oh, my gosh, Echo, I could have gotten so many kills. Like, my kill count could be so high. <sighs> well, I kind of wish I'd abused that at the start of the game. And you're talking about stuff right now that's completely going over people's heads that are watching this. Because, right. no, which is fine, because this game has unwritten rules that are based on each kingdom. And that's just stuff that you learn from being within your kingdom, from paying attention to communicating with your alliance. So that's kind of another side tip again. Kingdom rules could be different from kingdom to kingdom, and they're developed by the people within the kingdom, not by the game itself. So you want to follow those kingdom rules to kind of keep peace and not become someone that's going to be targeted later on. So that's what kingdom rules are. That's what Chiskel's talking about here. As he's talking over your heads, I'm sorry for that. It's been so long since he's been a, he's been a new player, and myself, actually, too. Yeah, um, man. So let's talk about commanders a little bit. We talked a lot about gathering, which is important, especially for new players, but commander sculpture spending. There's so many commanders. I know when, when you first get a legendary commander, you're like, yes, this is amazing. I want to spend all of my sculptures on this and, and make this commander the strongest. Not really knowing who the commander is, what they do. What, how should someone approach commander spending? Okay, so a couple thoughts here. Uh, and this is probably two tips combined. Um, okay. 
One is that you really want to focus on just like one or two commanders, like one epic commander, one legendary commander. Um, if even you're selecting a legendary commander, yeah, true. Uh, because if you spread those sculptures all around, you're going to end up with a bunch of not so amazing commanders when the thing you might really want to do in war is bring out one excellent army that can do right. work on the battlefield. Because really, if you want to be able to help out your alliance, you may just need that one beast army and that's what you're going to be trying to invest in even if it's epics because you could still put together a very solid army with epics if you're a newer player and you don't get those legendaries like that's the free-to-play player buff army is going to be epic commanders correct um yeah i mean there's a bunch of different commanders you can use i'll pl shamelessly plug the video that we did together recently mm -hmm. uh where we talked about ethelflaed yeah who you know, you pair her with Joan of Arc and you are contributing so much, even as a um, low power player, because the things that they're doing are buffs and debuffs that are percentage based, not at all based on your research or your power. So they're really great commanders to use. And the reason he brings up Ethel Flat is a commander that you can rank up really quickly. A little side tip right here within your expeditions, guys, as I'm showing you on the screen, you can come over here to your metal store and you could buy three legendary Ethel Flat sculptures every day with rewards that you get just from participating in expeditions so this is a legendary commander that you can get completely free to play take the time log in every day and grab those and you could have a max level legendary commander in 200 and something days yeah it takes time <laughs> it takes time but so does everything in this game man everything takes time so it's it's just part of it and it's a legendary so that's pretty darn awesome yeah now, well uh, this is a good segue to the next thing I think we were going to talk about, which is that um, it is. You know, when you when you level up a commander and you also level up their skills, you want to be really careful. Mm -hmm. uh, as you level up and start up a commander, each new star level unlocks a new skill up to four stars. So a commander like Ethelflaed is really powerful if and only if you first max out the first skill, and this is true of every legendary commander and every epic commander you want to max the first skill before you proceed and yes. there's a ton of detailed guides out there for all the other commanders in the order in which you should unlock their skills mm -hmm. yeah and there uh, are there are some that you may not want to focus on that first skill because maybe it's not as important but when, when you're talking about those epics and legendaries you really want to go through skill one boom two boom three four Another thing that I made mistakes with in the beginning of the game. Luckily, I was able to catch myself up from, you know, endless playing and, and being a sponsored creator here for Rise of Kingdoms. Hey, guys, did I mention this is a sponsored piece of content from Rise of Kingdoms? Both Chiskul and I are part of the community team for Rise of Kingdoms. Forgot to mention that in the beginning, but we got it right here. So if you made it into 18 minutes into the video, now you know again. And if you're enjoying this, if you're liking these tips, throw a big thumbs up on the video. But we're not done, right? Did we talk about experienced tomes on peacekeepers yet, Chiss School? We have not. That's so, our number 10. That's our number 10 right there. This was a mistake that I committed pretty early on is, you know, peacekeepers are so good. They're great yeah. for battling barbarians. Um, and I wanted to level mine up and put more skills on them so they'd be even better at battling barbarians. Um, however, what I quickly got myself to is a situation where my peacekeepers, which are all what you want to use for battling barbarians, they give you more experience, mm -hmm. they cost less action points, so they're very, very efficient, um, and frequently they have skills that give experience and do more damage. And the situation I got myself in is they were all max level. And so now I'm running around with only one of the two commanders in my armies getting experience because my peacekeepers are all max level. Right. So. You want to, you know, okay, get to level 20 so you can bring another commander in the group. That's mm -hmm. the level. Maybe it's three stars that they have to be at before they can bring in. A, anyways, get to that it's threshold. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> but then from there, you're good to go. Right. Gravy. Don't put more experience on them. And with you saying that, I completely made that mistake as well when I was doing Lohar. I, uh, I completely misspent. I mean, he's doing great for me, and he's max level, and it's great and all, but I wasted. And that's what we're trying to prevent you guys from doing, wasting time, wasting resources, wasting you know, rewards that you get from inside of the game. But we're going to move on to our 11th and final tip, which is really like 20 tips if you actually listened in depth to what we were discussing here. Don't level too soon your command. Don't level them up too soon. Yes. Um, I can't tell you how often I'll be in a live stream and a question will be like, 
I have a, a one one five three you know, like Julius Caesar. And that's the first skill, the second skill, the third skill, the fourth skill. One, one, five, three. And it's just like, oh, that's so bad. Because what happens is every skill you put onto a legendary or epic commander, almost any commander, it costs more sculptures and more sculptures and more sculptures and more sculptures. So it starts out just 10 sculptures to upgrade a skill on a legendary. And it ends, the last two cost 80 each. 80 sculptures each. So, um... (laughs) If you didn't max out those first skills before proceeding, you get into a situation where it is very, very hard to get that commander to a usable state, um, and you can really mess up your commanders. So max those first skills before leveling up. And even though my account is this old, right? It's like nine months old. I wanted to max the first and second skills on Julius Caesar before proceeding, and I still have not taken my Julius Caesar past level 20. Hasn't really? happened. It, I, it, it's still a two-star commander. Only the first two skills are unlocked. I have not maxed out the second skill yet. I have not leveled it up anymore. I guess you so, have a few other commanders that you like more than Julius Caesar. You know, look, you got to <laughs> pick You got to pick and choose. Yes, you so do. The worst thing you could do is go in and say, like, boom, all my legendaries that I unlock, I make them 1-1-1. One, 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 and it's like, oh, no. Yep, wasted. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Yep, it's we, almost start over levels of, of bad if you care about your legendary commanders. Yeah, which you should because if you're getting them, especially if you're free to play, you want to spend as wisely as possible because it could cost quite a bit of money to get them to max level. So if you're not going to be spending money, you're going to be spending time and grinding. So be smart. Yeah. And, and the way the way you get them from grind is with keys. So mm-hmm. eventually, like I've put zero universal sculptures on Julius Caesar, right? I just, I've slowly over time been getting them with keys. And once that first and second skill are at five and five, I can make them five, five, one, one and like crush it in the battlefield. Right. But if I had made him... You know, a five, one, you know, three, three just would kind of suck. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So going on, and we kind of did talk about this tip a little bit earlier in the video, which is fine, but now you got it in depth. And like I said, we have 11 written down here on paper. We probably gave you about 15 really solid tips that I wish I was able to watch nine months ago when I started playing this game so that I could have made some choices just a little bit differently and I would have been in a little bit better position, although we made it up. You know, we were able to recover from some of those mistakes that we made, but uh, that's because I have guys like you, man, to help me out and advise me along the way. And happy to be here. And, you know, these tips are crucial, man. Things really I are. wish I had known. Yep, I agree. And guys, if you want more tips like that, not only do I have them on my channel, especially in videos where I bring on some guests like Chis School. He's been on my channel many times and hopefully many more times in the future. But his YouTube channel, he puts out daily videos on Rise of Kingdoms and they are extremely valuable, breaking the, day, the game down from beginners all the way to the end game portions of Rise of Kingdoms, areas that I don't even touch in the game, to be honest. So if you want that end game content, there is no better place to go than his channel. In the description of the video, and at the end of the video, I'll be linking his channel and a few of his videos for you to take a look at. And I highly suggest you do, not only because he's my friend, but because I really do think his his content's valuable and can be helpful to you. Just school, last words, my friend. Uh, you know, Follow these tips. Go and learn from people in your kingdom on YouTube. There is so much information available to you. Read the info tool tips on the buildings. They'll tell you how stuff works. Uh, But like, gosh, just search on YouTube, on Echo's channel, on my channel, whatever terms you're trying to figure out, thing you're trying to learn, and you'll, you'll find out. Also, you've got a Discord, right? Both of us have Discords where you can pop in and ask questions. Sure do. I have a Discord server with myself, but not only me, a whole bunch of people from the community that are really cool and willing to help because there is a really cool community behind Rise of Kingdoms here that is willing to help new players learn their way. There's no question that's a dumb question because to be honest, we've all had that question at some point in the game. And with the game only being nine months old, we kind of remember those moments, especially like my burning city. 
<laughs> oh, those are moments you don't forget, my friend. No, you don't forget them at all. But guys, all the links to our socials are going to be down in the description below. The Discord, the Twitter, any way you want to get in touch with us with questions, ideas, and of course, you can always drop a comment below. We're definitely looking through our comment sections, never missing a comment. But for today, guys, that's been it. I'm really excited about this video as I'm finishing it up right now, and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as Chiskul, I think, and I enjoyed making it. But... Yeah, come back because we got more videos coming out for you on the regular, making you better, more efficient players inside of Rise of Kingdoms. Until next time, my friends, be good.